Welcome to Mastering and Guide Learning Ultrasound and Echo. Hello everyone. Before you start this uh, watching these clips, I have our, uh, two clips about uh, wall motion abnormality. Please, before you uh, review this one, go check them out, then come back and finish this one. Anyway, as you know, uh, in most places, one of our uh, echo tech job and responsibility is writing preliminary reports in most places. And why not? So I am going to uh, represent 10 cases in this uh, clips and we are going to go over all of them together. Uh, I give uh, 30 seconds for each clips, write it down your answer and then check match up and see where did you miss, what did you miss. Uh, all the patients represent by equivalent of the coronary artery disease like chest pain, chest pressures, shortness of breath or some kind of digestive symptom. Anyway, those that is relevant to the uh, CAD, imagine that. Okay, uh, first case. Uh, all cases has this question. First of all, you have to uh, find out if there is any wall motion abnormality or not. Which wall, the name of the wall, and which segment, the name of the segment. And if it's possible, uh, what is the most probably the coronary artery involved, most probably, means in majority of cases. And in each of them, if there is any significant other finding, write it down and mention it. Okay, I wish you finish this one. Uh, a ten, 10 second more. <clears throat> Let's do it. Okay, here. Before that, just I just very short review for those segment and blood perfusion. Then we go all over them. As you know, we have uh, six wall at the basal and the mid part of the uh, those wall. So we have six segment at the basal, six segment at the mid, and four segment at the apical. Each wall has three, in another word, three parts. Basal, the basal of the heart, mid-segment, and apical, and so on all the way. And uh, as you know, in some uh, method of the segmentation of the wall, uh, some places they use 17 segment instead of the 16 segment. The apical cap, we call apical cap, the tip of the apex LV, they take it as a one segment. So it becomes 17 segment. If you see on the report, some places they use 16 segments or some places 17 segments. Anyway, on this patient, uh, we have here, just as a general rules, I explained that we go uh, each wall separately, each segment, we evaluate each segment. Let's go start from the septum, we go to the lateral. Here at the basal, this is septum at apical four, we call this septum, but more accurate is inferoceptal. Or if you look at here, we have septum, the top one, the top one we call anteroceptal or IVS on the plaques and inferoceptal or septum on the four chamber view. So it is at the septum, uh, basal septum, is contraction, thickening, and excursion. But that the mid, you can see bulging out and thinning. So what type of the kinesis we have it? Yes, dyskinesia. So we have uh, dyskinesia of the, of the mid-segment. The other uh, segment, if you go there and watch excursion and thickening, uh, almost normal. 
and based on the territory of the blood perfusion on the uh, all those wall we know this segment can be uh, supplied by the RCA or LAD okay here RCA or LAD uh, depend and sometimes over they have overlap both of those vessel supply without angiography is not possible we say exactly which uh, artery especially is one segment which branch because when we have the main segment uh, main coronary artery blockage or any pathology process happen usually it involve all the wall but when we have branches major branches involved like the diagonal marginal all those branches major branches then we have one or two segment dysfunction and the another abnormal finding in this case as you notice we have localized lateral but still we, uh, uh, pericardial effusion still we cannot make uh, see this is localized we have to see other uh, window and other view next one here take 30 second beside of the does wall motion can you appreciate the other anatomic structure on this view is apical too beside of the la mitra valve and lv do you see another normal structure there or not let's see okay you are ready let's go here we have again those segment and apical and blood perfusion here we go let's go start with here this one is anterior wall this is inferior wall okay the apical two chamber anterior and inferior anterior antero basal antero mid mid segment and antero apical is almost normal kinetic especially here hyperkinetic because it's adjacent to the some abnormal as you notice here this part that's inf antero inf infero uh, apical infero apical this part is almost hypokinetic and mid infero inferior uh, wall mid is dyskinetic and you can see bulging also during systolic for the basal inferior basal is thickening even there is some side lobe artifact and go off axis because you can see a little of the rv but you can see there is still uh, some uh, excursion and thickening on the uh, this segment so we have mid segment inferior wall involved based on that you know this part is supplied by 90 over 90 percent by rca 94 percent something like that okay uh, i ask if you see another normal structure here yes we can see here coronary sinus and here if you a little optimize image you can see left auricle that wedge shape usually in apical too you can uh, check it out and see it most of the time here you can see pulmonary vein too if you put color you can make sure next 30 second <clears throat> let's do it here we have apical three chamber here we have uh, posterior wall or infralateral wall posterior wall or infralateral wall basal and mid and apical of posterior wall uh, have normal kinetic or maybe we can call it a little hyperkinetic but it's normal apex yes thickening and excursion moving toward 
inside and apex and myocardium become thick. Apical, anteroapical, the same, thickening and moving. Not only moving uh, this way, moving to the center or excursion, but look at the mid, mid segmental at the anterior wall is hyper echo is thin and is bulging a little a little not too much or become thinner actually become thinner during systolic phase so th become thinner or bulging out during systolic the, the, is definition of the dyskinesia so based on thinning and hyperecho and all those stuff, we can say this is has at least old a few weeks at least passed through the heart attack. And this is a sec septum uh, sigmoid basal, so is almost normal kinetic. Here we have a little, it's too much, uh, gain is too much, we have to decrease gain, but here is wall motion, the take, uh, increase gain see the endocardium that's fine that is correct but if you want to focus on the other finding you have to change your optimizing and what blood supply involved in this case as you remember generally speaking almost always almost always over 90 90 percent Antroceptal or anterior or IVS that you can see in apical tree and plaques. Both of them are the same, just orientation of the image difference. Always uh, supplied by LAD. When you see anterior, always you know LAD involved. On In this case, only one of the branches. Which branches? Marginal or septal? Septal, because the septal branches go to the septum. Antoreceptal. What about this case? And look at the EKG. Do you see any abnormality? What do you call it? Okay. Ten second. Let's do it. Here, the same apical, those segment and wall and territory of the blood. We go start here with the posterior. You can see hyperkinetic, hyperdynamic thickening up to the apex. Apex just passively bending this way, doesn't thickening. If you zoom in and magnify, you can notice no, apex doesn't thickening at all. So apex is akinetic, apical septal or anteroceptal. This part is akinetic, mid is akinetic, uh, basal, just very hypokinetic, actually take it as a akinetic. It doesn't thickening at all. So totally all territory of the LLAD has been blockage and involved. What about the EKG, Isaac? As you know, this is white QRS complex. White QRS complex means what? Bundle blood block or PVC or whatever. When we have more three after each other, running of the three uh, next to each, after each other, we call run of the PVC. And is very really high risk for development, uh, VTAG, and all those stuff. They are very high risk patient. Next one. Here we have uh, kind of the plaques. A little low, but that's fine. Uh, again, we have 20, 30 second. After you find any wall motion abnormality, uh, say what is this? structure here okay I think everybody got it let's go here we have the same but orientation just horizontal make it horizontal the same as apical tree 
as you see yes we have base uh, uh, posterior or infralateral wall hyper kinetic very you can see very hyper kinetic active thickening apex we don't see it but most probably is akinetic why i even i don't see apex but i can say this is akinetic apex can you say why yes if you look at the diameter of the intraventricular cavity during systole this diameter doesn't change i know this part of the heart apex doesn't contract at all so totally from apex to here to the end of this mid segment completely akinetic basal of the anteroceptal is a little i say severe hypokinetic not akinetic but severe hypokinetic uh, what about this uh, structure as you see here is rv wall of the rv and here you can see and there is pericardium and what is this mid gray yes it is pericardial fat pad many times usually classic uh, ecogenicity of the pericardial fat pad or epicardial fat pad all of them usually are mid gray but many times depending of angle of insonation and all those stuff can be hypoecho or sometime unecho how do you differentiate it uh, hypoecho or almost on echo fat from the fluid can you guess is the physics if it's fluid if you put color decrease scale you can see during hard activity some uh, become colorful mean there is some uh, movement of the fluid but if it's pericardial fat pad or any mass it doesn't give you any color doppler at that area and the uh, vessel involved as usual this part always uh, LED here uh, the reason I brought this case is important one concept whenever you evaluate especially suspicious CAD coronary artery disease and if you don't see clear myocardial thickening border always don't judge based on the hype uh, it looks like if you uh, don't look at the definity just look at this you say okay it's not bad it looks like okay lower limit normal but it looks like okay but when you don't see clear endocardium and especially myocardium thickening i don't see here any myocardium here just a little at the middle of the myocardium but i don't see endocardium and next to that here i don't see apex even gain is high still i don't see it if you decrease you lose it at all here i can see at the level but i don't see at this level at this level is not clear anyway way we you don't see two segment consequent segment endocardium and myocardium clearly during cardiac cycle or any especially apex you don't see it and there is some uh, risk factor or evidences of C, uh, CAD always use definity this patient this uh, we did uh, definity based on the EKG finding and all other stuff as you notice there is septum is thickening normal kinetic apex normal kinetic apical lateral normal kinetic but all suddenly you see here not only thin this bulging during systolic is if you notice thinning and bulging so actually mid segment lateral is uh, involved and patient has one of the branches of the circumf uh, circumflex uh, artery coronary artery most most probably because blood supply of the lateral 
is most majority by circumflex and some of them by LAD. Right? And most of the time they are overlap with each other. Here, another interesting case, as you see, we have, except just first watch and guess, look at that, I go over it. I think all of you find it and even you can name it. What is that? <coughs> Let's do it here. As you notice, we have basal, both of the picture or clips belong to one patient. Basal on the apical four and apical two, almost hyperkinetic basal mid and apical mid and apical in both walls are severe hypokinetic or akinetic akinetic hypokinetic hyperkinetic akinetic based on this pattern that we called it symmetric symmetric we don't have this is almost very uncommon that the same segment at the different wall involved because those segments, the blood supply are completely different. Apical here, this one is mid, for example, mid apical is but LAD, mid inferior is but RCA, and so on. And here lateral, circumflex, here RCA or LAD, or anyway means those segments that symmetrical involved is uncommon. This is a coincidence, both those branches involved at the same level is not common. Uh, this pattern that give you hyper dynamic basal and ballooning mid and apex is that give you pattern of Takutsubo cardiomyopathy syndrome or stress cardiomyopathy, ballooning cardiomyopathy, broken heart syndrome, all those stuff. Uh, and it's very classic, typic. But don't forget, Takutsubo usually is apical, but in those cases that we have high afterload. What does it mean? We have LVO2 obstruction, hypertension, aortic stenosis, those has high afterload, it can present more reversal, means apex is hyperkinetic, basal is akinetic. So we have ballooning at the basal and apex is hyperkinetic and hyperdynamic in those cases. What else I want to mention here, but uh, don't forget, still with this type of the patient, always the final 100% diagnosis is based on the angiography. And after angiography, we can diagnose 100%. But based on the appearance, over 90%, we can be sure this is Takotsubo syndrome. Here, it gives you the pattern of, if, if you do systolic, this is the pattern of Takotsubo. Uh, that is the uh, pot or jar for the Asian they use for trapping octopus. Okay. What about this one? First of all, which uh, level of the uh, this short axis is basal, mid, or apical? Second, which segment and which vessel involved? <clears throat> Ready? Do you see another finding on this image or not too? Let's go. Here, what, do, what those are landmark for the, those region of the short axis? is mitral valve leaflet and papillary muscle and after papillary muscle and RV. Let's go one by one. Here we have 
some part of the papillary uh, mitral valve anterior and some part of the posterior mitral valve leaflet we don't see papillary muscle we see a little of papillary muscle but not the connected to the wall so this is mitral valve level become basal pisax basal pisax so here we have basal pisax the landmark is interjunction of the RV to the septum. So it becomes septum here, the RV, and here the connection of the RV to the LV. Do you see here? So here to here is septum. Half anterior is anteroseptal. Half below become inferoseptal or septum or IVS. IVS septum. Anyway, and so on. Here you can see this, this, all this wall, seg wall is inferior, posterior, anterolateral, or hyperdynamic and hyperkinetic, moving, thickening. But this part, passive movement without thickening, yes? So anteroseptal and inferoseptal, both, um, both of them are kinetic. Antro, uh, an anterior, anterior wall I am not going to judge because I don't see clear myocardium and endocardium so I don't judge based on these images another finding you can see here we have a localized and not localized because here we have some pericardial effusion here we have some pericardial effusion too next one what level and which segment and which wall involved 20 second go ahead <clears throat> yes let's do it here this is at the level of the Papillary muscle because you can see hyperecho and connected to the wall. If it's papillary muscle not connected and you see a gap here, that is basal view. But when it's connected, this is papillary level. Okay, papillary level, again landmark. We have from here interjunction to the interjunction. This is our septum, anterior, anterolateral or lateral, posterior posterior or infralateral inferior yes so inferior posterior lateral hyperdynamic yes anterior severe hypokinetic anteroseptal completely akinetic and a little inferoseptal severe hypokinetic but here anteroseptal is completely kinetic and a little if you know it is here a teen become thinner uh, more if I want to label it I, I call it dyskinetic okay next one here go ahead I give you 10 seconds you are fast it seems There you go. Here, as you mentioned, most probably uh, got it right. Here is apex. Why is apex? Because almost you don't see papillary muscle. When you pass fanning to the apex, when you pass the papillary muscle and you don't see papillary muscle, that is your ap apical shot and short axis. And the same here we, we have, we don't have uh, four uh, segment or four wall we don't have six segment or wall we have only four instead of the six on these two basal and mid we had six segment but on the apical we have just two anterior inferior lateral septal that's it so on this case we have anterior septal almost severe hypokinetic or akinetic inferior normokinetic lateral 
hypokinetic. I cannot see it sometimes come with the breathing, but you cannot say here. Okay. And still you can see a little part of the RV2. I hope you like it. Don't forget, please, this uh, lecture is public too, so share it. And don't forget, uh, involve in the community group and when I put tool and survey, just check it out. It's not a bad idea because based on those results, I am going to make plan for next one and so on. Have a wonderful time.